right gang welcome back to the channel as you can see i'm in my happy place all right i know you guys just saw the video well hopefully you saw the video of um the will it run on this uh retro style gy6 scooter i don't know what they call them chinese scooters go by several different names so if you know one or two of them let me know but yeah this thing uh it ran ran okay but in editing i did notice that this sucker uh the the pilot jet in this thing was the wrong jet. It was too short, way too far up in it. That's why it wasn't starting right and it was acting funny. Okay. All right, guys, got Chuck Bagger in here. So you probably guessed it. It's time to switch those handle, uh, not the handlebars. It's time to switch the wiring harness out and everything we're going to take from the parts bike over to this bike. But first we're going to play with that carburetor a little bit and see, can we get that thing running, running? And I'm going to try to pump these tires back up. I know the back will go up. Probably hope I can get the front one to uh, beat up to get back on the bead. But if not, we're not worried about it. It's a parts bag. All right, guys, you see I got the handlebars off of Chuck Bagger. And that's for a reason because I forgot I needed to strip and clean these things and paint them before we put all the hardware on. Because once I put this harness on, it's probably not coming back off. Now, I still have to paint the frame of Chuck Bagger, but... I don't think none of that's going to get in the way. I probably can paint it with all the uh, engine and all the, well, except for the brackets and the seats and stuff. We'll take that off. But yeah, all right guys, check it out. Got my strip job going on. I'm using this uh, Bauer Heavy Duty Guaranteed Paint and Rust Stripper. Now, uh, Eastwood has the Contour SCT. Similar, I mean, actually almost identical to this, but this one was at Harbor Freight and it was only 150 bucks. And then once I bought it, I saw Contour here. There's on sale for 150 bucks, but eh, I already got this one. But check it out, man. This thing is a beast. Look at that strip job. And this thing just has that big abrasive drum and it just goes through and chews that paint right off of there. And you know, versus the side here. These scratches is why I decided to uh, go ahead and strip it all the way down and just try to that it paint over them it looks horrible but yeah guys all right i'm having gopros issues again this morning so i don't know it might be time for a new one this is the gopro hero 9 so might be time for a new one we got one on backup over there charging but okay all right guys well i'm gonna change my name to diamond and get my strip on and finish these handlebars so i'll tune you back in Okay, I guess I've done enough stripping for the day. Put my clothes back on and get back to work. Alright, got these bars all stripped down and ready for this uh, etching primer from Harbor Freight. So, yeah, cleaned up pretty good. I didn't get all the way in the corners, you know, but eh, it is what it is. So, yeah, let's go put this thing on the bench and spray it and then we can get to switching this harness over oh you know what nah we're gonna make this sucker run right then we're gonna switch the harness over all right gang figured out where that oil leak came from on the other side in the last video <laughs> uh somebody forgot to put the dipstick back in jimmy <laughs> all right so i got the carburetor loose i'm going to go ahead and um put a new jet in fix that jet issue i'll show it to you real quick Okay, got the bowl off, and uh, normally I wouldn't let fuel just leak all over my table, but we got to clean that oil up. That'll help. All right, look at that jet, man. It is way down in there. So that was our running issue, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and replace both of them right now. Since I got it open, I got a whole pack of them. Just want to see if it's going to run right. All right. All right, see? That's how I was supposed to sit, not all the way up in there like it was. Now the main jet, I went ahead and left it alone because I pulled it out and it was pretty clean. So, all right, let's just go ahead and slap this bowl back on and see what this thing sounds like now. Okay guys, the carb is on, got the new jet sand and everything. I got the battery wired up, but hey, check this out. You know uh, that common sense thing that we all were born with or should have been born with and you know better? But you know, well, every man gets that uh, dumb gene in him that you know, 
For some reason, we cannot resist that dumb gene and do dumb things. Well, I knew hanging the uh, jumper wires around all this frame and you know, the last video you guys seen it sparking and everything. But well, it touched and it cooked the wires so I had to end up making a new one. <laughs> okay, anyway, got the battery in so let's see if this battery has enough juice to start this. All right, here we go. go amazing what the right pilot jet will do sounds really good now idle's a little low oh and i still didn't put the dipstick on jimmy wow you know what that's where the oil on the wall came from and i didn't realize it all right let's shut this bad boy off and uh, I'm going to put some more oil in it and uh, a little bit more gear oil. I'm going to throw the seat on and try to get these tires aired back up. And we're going to spin a block with this thing, all right? Okay, gang. I'm in the testing alley. You, Those of you that's been with the channel since the beginning, you guys have, you probably recognize this alley. All right. This thing is peppy, man. So, show you guys what's going on with it. Starts right up. no idea how fast this thing is going I'm going to set my uh, GPS app I'm going to stick it back in my pocket but should give us an idea all right everything zeroed out max average all right put it in my pocket and let's give it a whirl this is all uphill gang back in the shop got the bike back on the stand well the stand can't talk man i am impressed for this thing being off of the road for 13 years leaning up against somebody's dang on garage dry rod it like hell this thing runs after some work like it never left the street before and you see we got a little smoky tire action going on you know i had to Smoke those little dry rotted tires up a little bit for you. <laughs> I had already smoked it before I put the video on there and it was real sticky when I started off the second time so it started to grab and grip and hop but man this bike I don't know I kind of like it I like the style I like the feel of it but eh, we're not here to build this one man this is all for Chuck Bagger so Chuck Bagger will definitely be getting his engine. I don't think I'm going to rebuild it right now. What I'm going to do is pressure wash it off really good. And uh, once we get it installed, I'll just keep my eyes on it for leaks. Man, this is GY6, man. This thing is like a diesel engine. But hey, just like a diesel engine, if it's leaking oil, it's got oil. <laughs> okay. So all right, guys, I'm going ahead and let's jump right in, pulling these plastics off. Um getting off our hand controls so we can get to this wiring harness and we can just go ahead and uh, bring old chuck bagger in and get it all wired up so we can see what it sounds like 
Now with this wiring harness, I will be taking the stator too, because uh, the stators work for 50cc and 150cc. They're the same, the only thing is different is the magnet because of the crankshaft uh, hole in it. So, yep, that's what we wanna do. Let me stop chibber jabbering and get to work. Okay, gang, getting the wiring harness off. Got everything loose up here. I just gotta take the hand controls off. I'm actually taking my time and wiping the dust off of the uh, wiring harness. You can see that spot I missed there. Just want, don't wanna put anything, anything dirty on Chuck Bagger. All right, but check this out. This is what I wanna show you real quick. Look, I am missing a case bolt right there. Now, there's telltale signs when I pulled the intake off of the engine, there was some silicone on it. Just little telltale signs that somebody's been in this engine. Did they put a bore kit on it? Did they put a good bore kit on it? Don't know. Well, we won't figure that out for a while though. Okay, gang, we got a little eight pole stator. AC power, you can tell it's AC power because that coil layer is wrapped. DC power, you wouldn't have a wrapped coil. And most of your 11 and 12 or multi-pole or more poles than this, it's uh, DC power. Yeah, but the stator doesn't look that bad. It looks like somebody probably replaced it not too long ago. It's this thing is just horrible and grody on the outside. I ain't gonna pull this off. Hey guys, this is why I love parts bikes. I get all these extra bolts that I can get to gather up and throw them into my bolt bin. And who knows, in 37 years, I might find one bolt or something that I need, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right guys, gotta take advantage of this rare chance to clean my table. There's always something on it, so I'm gonna get this thing all cleaned up. Oh yeah, it is a hundred percent times better. Okay, got Chuck Bagger back on the stand. And some clean shop tiles too. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the uh, footboard and the leg shield. Man, it feels good to have a clean table again. I mean, you guys didn't say nothing. You just sit here and watch to get gross. I mean, a simple, hey bud, clean your freaking table. You know, that would've worked okay but anyway all right got my harness laid out in the kind of way i want it now i'm not going to be welding on the tabs to hold things like the um the solenoid and the cdi box yet i'm just going to zip it tie it all up you know we just want to hear it run so i'm gonna go ahead and uh start laying this sucker out zip tying everything where it should be and then we'll try to fire this sucker up now, I do need to go ahead and drop the exhaust so I can get my um, my lower cooling shroud on there. And I gotta put the spark plug back in the head because it's over there in the 150 that we just used, drove. All right, let's get to work. Okay, for those of you that don't know anything about stators, let me show you a little something, give you a little schooling. Come on in close now. Okay, this is the stator off our 50cc. This is a, uh, the stock stator that came with the bike, I'm assuming. All right, now here's our plug-ins for our stator, okay? And okay, now here, uh, where the heck did it go? Where is it at? All right, here is our stator. Let me unplug it for our 150cc. You notice? They're a little different. All right, mainly the connections are bigger in the 50 versus the 150. But with that being said, the stators are the same. They're the same size. If I were to put this stator here, it's the same size as that one. This is an eight pole. This is an eight pole. Same, same. Okay, and the 150 cc will fit inside my magneto. Okay, so let me go ahead and pull this bad boy off. And let's stick the other one on. And you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, let's connect that pickup. This part up here is the pickup. That picks up the uh, signal for your spark. Okay. 
Let me make sure I don't put those back in the bin before I need them again. stator off here it is there green tip it's going over there now this stator is still hooked up to my uh, wiring harness so I like that when I'm doing wiring harness swaps I kind of like to keep everything together you know what I mean just simplifies my life you know so if you ever want to put a new wiring harness on your bike keep it all together make your life simple okay now your stator should go in a certain way that will keep the wires aiming the right way and what i mean by that is you don't want to put your stator in like this where your pickup and everything is at the bottom you want to rotate the stator around to where your pickup and everything goes at the top like it should okay so let me go ahead and fumble with this and get this in and i'll tune you guys right back in all right see it is installed and it fits fits pretty good let me grab my magneto real quick and i'll slide it right over top and show you bada boom bada bing no rub no love you know it fits so all right so i'm going to go ahead and just why did i take that off made no sense all right let me put this back on get that little bit of crud out of there matter of fact i need to clean the inside of this magnet all right i'm going to get this back on and um put my fan back on and uh fan cover now guys just to touch on the point of the cooling shrouds now, there's going to be people telling you hey if you had an oil cooler you don't need it you know or hey i took mine off no problems hey right, you listen to who you want to but uh why would they make them if they didn't need them i'm just saying okay gang tune you back in well, i got the ape hangers back on freshly painted i did miss a couple spots like from under the bottom side so that's why the handlebar clamp is taped back on well taped up okay now i am going to have to extend some wires maybe the, the wire for the hand controls on the right hand side i'm not going to be using this throttle handle here or the cable because we have this knockoff makuni card for the bike so yep that's what we're going to do now i was able to use some of the bow holes that went for some of the other things that were on the mad dog because if anybody don't remember this is a mad dog frame okay so i got the horn mounted i have the uh rectifier mounted the voltage regulator basically and i have the flasher zip tied up here i mean zip ties are good especially the black ones man those things last forever so i just have to extend I don't well i'm probably going to shorten up this wire for the ignition because the ignition goes right here and it's just way too much wire so that might get shortened when i weld in the uh the mount for the ignition now the other side is definitely going to have to be extended because it will not even reach so yep that's why i was kind of dreading doing this i hate wiring but that's really no big deal it's not hard you can see now I zip tied all of my wiring from the front to the frame here and this is going to be permanent zip ties this is my fuel sending unit wire which uh, is probably going to work out good because the tank sits right here so I'm hoping well, let's see we got it right here and I will stick it in make sure we ain't got no clearance issues I don't know. That's perfect. Yeah, so, hey. And it clicks right in. Check it out. <laughs> Can't get no better than that, man. So now I just got to find me a fuel gauge because the wires for the fuel gauge is in here somewhere, okay? 
All right, you got the CDI zip tied, permanently zip tied to the frame here. And now these zip ties are temporary until I get me some um, like brake line clamps. That's what I'm gonna use, probably some type of hose clamp, metal clamp I can just screw into the frame to hold the wiring harness here. Now this whole hot mess of uh, battery wires have gotta be shortened up. And uh, right where the battery is at, guys, I think that's where it's gonna be because I can have that battery just about that high up under the bags and it's still gonna have great wheel clearance under there so I already got a battery tray we cut it out of the floorboard that we're using the mock-up here it is here I was gonna cut this thing here off even all the way around put some brackets in because look we have bracket mounts here and on here for that panel the mad dogs had in here that covered this area well basically that area i think i still have one of those i might cut one of those well i might see if i still have it and maybe just cut a hole and drop this in from the top don't know figure it out in a minute it's not a big deal but yeah now i got the uh rug low klein clean kiain i can't say that that thing there that stock carburetor i got that on for right now because it runs to the throttle you know it's all hooked up so uh, hold on oh it's not tightened down okay i gotta tighten that down but yeah guys it's all wired in right now so we should have power so can i turn this key with one hand yeah perfect all righty so where's the other handle control make sure our horn works perfect we got horns, so we got power. I got my grounds running all in here. I mean, I haven't had to make anything work. It just kind of all plugged in. The stator's in there from the 150, so we good on that one. Okay, let's see if we hit our start button. Now I got my, uh, my neutral safety switch, I want to call it. Starter lockout. I just got a little clip, fuel hose clip in there so we can... Uh, be able to hit the button without having to hold the brakes. All right. Okay, she's spinning over. Now, only thing I have to do now is plumb in the fuel tank, fuel lines and vacuum lines. So I gotta go grab the fuel pump off of uh, another parts bike that I have. I think it's a better than the one, the little one we just had. So, cause I think it's better at pulling and pushing fuel up so since this tank is lower it's kind of like a mad dog fuel pump so i'm gonna plug in the fuel line i'm gonna tune you guys back in and we're gonna see if this thing gonna run and what it sounds like okay gang i got the fuel system all plumbed in but let me fill you guys in on the debacle and trials and tribulations i just went through okay now you see we have the knockoff makuni carburetor on there it's probably not hooked up right, okay? Because uh, I've never hooked up one of these carbs with this many vacuums. Now, I have, I've hooked up uh, OKO carbs, and they were a little bit more simpler, but okay, clue you in. Now, we're going to use the Klein carb, that came, the little 50cc carb that came with uh, another bag to start it off because we had this throttle cable here already plumbed in to our throttle, right? Okay. Well, I got everything plumbed in, started filling the bowl, it started leaking. I went and looked for another one, and I don't have one. So, I said, well, I'm going to have to put on the knockoff Makuni. Well, I put this sucker on, I had to hook up the uh, special throttle cable that comes, well, it didn't come with it, I bought this somewhere else, but. I had to hook this throttle cable up, because this uh, slide, flat slide carb, you know, it goes straight in through the top. So I got this one hooked up, start filling the bowl, it started leaking. Dude, you want to know about 50 shades of pissed off I was for a second there. But I took it apart, played with the float, uh, hooked it back to the fuel line, filled the bolt, it didn't leak. So I bolted it down. All right, now it's a little smoke in here because I was so pissed off I had to see what was up. So I hit the switch and it started running. All right, well, it sounds okay. 
<laughs> doesn't sound bad so let me go ahead and see can i do this with one hand to hook you guys up i might have to put my uh harness back on but let's just see will it fire off with me just hitting the switch <laughs> Well, we got a runner, guys, and it is loud. <laughs> the little flux compressor muffler didn't do a thing. It's still loud, but that's good because loud pipes save lives, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, guys, it, it sounds great. Now, that's the first time, well, before I showed you guys, this is the first time this motor has been crunk since I built it. And I built this motor, this engine, whew, I want to say, four four months ago maybe five so yeah dude they sound great they work now it does favor this pipe a little bit more and i was kind of fearing that but there you feel something out of this one you know it's not just a total this one side but yeah i like it it sounds nasty and i know when we upgrade to 150 cc they're gonna sound even nastier but yeah, guys, that's it, man. Look at the hot mess, man. Look at the mess I have made today. <laughs> I've been out here all freaking day. All right, guys. This is what we've been waiting on. I know a lot of you want to hear this thing run. Well, you heard it. So my next steps is to button up all of this, figure out how to tune this carb. If I can tune this carb, I might have to ditch it if I can't get it right. But at this point i'm ecstatic i'm loving it okay so all right guys thanks for tuning in do not forget to like comment share and subscribe all right gotta comment gotta like that really helps the channel out okay all right guys i'll see you on the next one